Okay, so today I'm going to talk about my study, which is uh, to be published as a chapter um, in this book, um, uh, edited by the prominent scholars in the field of educational inequality and uh, sociology of education. Actually, the book is going to be published um, by the Multilingual Matters in the UK and coming out in three weeks' time. Um, the rationale for my study as shown here. So in recent years, our country has been experiencing, as all of you know, uh, social, economic, technological, and political changes, particularly related to um, globalization. Those changes have had and continue to have um, uh, important impact on the literacy practices of many young Mongolians. So both um, English and digital literacies have become important markers of social and cultural states of many people in different contexts uh, in Mongolia. However, research investigating um, young people's digital literacy practices in the Mongolian context was limited. So my study aimed to fill the gap. Um, although the number of the internet and mobile phone users have increased uh, um, has increased dramatically in recent years. A digital divide in terms of internet use exists between urban and rural areas in Mongolia. So um, there is a digital divide not only at a macro level, depending on the geographical locations where people live. I mean, depending on whether they live in urban, suburban, or rural areas. I tried to show using the, this context using those photos. Um, and unequal distribution of resources and opportunities, but also um, at a micro level, depending on people's age, networks, income, and education levels, and access to computers and digital literacies. Um, these were my research questions. So by my research, I aim to contribute to global perspectives on people's lived digital literacy practices by researching students in Mongolia in the field of literacy studies. Um, now I will talk briefly about theories that I use for my study. I use the literacy studies framework, which approaches literacy as multiple um, and as a part of everyday social and cultural practices. Uh, literacy is situate, uh, situate, studied in the particular contexts of social practice, such as at school, at work, um, at home, and within a community. So the importance of context, history, um, and power are integral to the literacy studies and also um, intrinsic to the key ideas by um, French sociologist um, Pierre Bourdieu. <coughs> His concepts of capital, habitus, and um, Feet are expressed as a formula for investigating social practice. So particular practices can be seen um, as the results of the relationship between uh, people's dispositions or habitus, uh, the resources or capital they possess, and their ability to act within a social space or field. So these concepts provided a useful framework and analytical thinking tool for my research to investigate and understand the digital literacy practices of the students. Um, now I will talk about the research design and methods chosen for my research. The study was conducted within a mixed study framework, but with the qualitative predominating. Um, to explore um, the students' digital literacy practices, contextual factors on those practices, and implications of these practices uh, for their lives, I conducted data collection involving um, third and fourth year students undergraduate students uh, who were majoring in English language teaching, British and American studies, and translation at the National University of Mongolia. Um, I, 80 students uh, completed the survey um, uh, voluntarily and anonymously on their uses of English, and la English language and digital technologies. Um, with six case study participants, I used individual um, interviews participants' biographical narratives, observation, and also survey as my data collection tools. Um, the table on this slide shows uh, brief profiles of the case study participants. They were all uh, graduating from the university and aged between 21 and um, 23. I had one male and five female participants. In terms of the origin, I had one urban, uh, two suburban, and uh, three rural students. 
um, their family background and parental educational backgrounds were quite different, as you can see on the slide. Um, you can also see uh, where students were living, where they accessed the internet, and whether they owned a computer. Actually, in my study, the most important factors on the students' um, uh, digital literacy practices were students' English proficiencies, um, their socioeconomic statuses, and urban, rural, suburban, educational, and socioeconomic contexts in Mongolia. For example, um, the only male participant, uh, Bolt, um, did not have internet connection at home because um, he wanted to pay for the internet after he got the permanent job after his graduation. So he preferred to use free internet access because of his limited economic capital. Another participant, um, um, Totma, was the one who had not used the internet as much as other participants and never worked besides her study because of her English proficiency, which is um, important linguistic and cultural capital in Mongolia. So this table shows the participants' purposes of using the internet and common online activities by the participants. They all use the internet to keep up with their friends, doing research for their assignments, keeping themselves um, informed and entertain themselves. The three uses, blogging, chatting, putting job ads online, were not observed in every participant. However, there was an urban-rural divide in access to the internet. Um, the study revealed that over 90% of the students from urban areas accessed the internet often, whereas 70% of the students from rural areas accessed the internet with the same frequency. So um, these are a few excerpts from the interviews and narratives. It is clear that the internet was an inseparable part of the student's academic study. For example, uh, Tsik emphasized the importance of the internet in her academic success. She highlighted the importance of university students not only having access to the internet for their study, but also for the development of their critical thinking. Uh, I mean, to evaluate the credibility of um, information and to gain English proficiency, which affected the quality of their online searches. In addition, her pref preference for uh, navigating sites in English was a typical response um, amongst all of the survey respondents, but uh, more common amongst those with urban backgrounds. Um, the case study participants also used um, their mobile phones and internet to communicate with their classmates and friends through texting and instant messenger to inquire about their homework and assignments and sometimes, as you can see, to collaborate. For example, Tisig used her own networks, her funds of social capital to complete her homework. She had many foreign friends whom she met through work as she was a guide for a tourist company. She communicated with them in English and sometimes used Skype to talk to her foreign friends. Communication actually um, was a practice for the students for finding out and sometimes even for supporting their learning. So um, in here, this is one of the case study participants, Arung, um, as you can see, um, blamed herself for uh, not gaining enough cultural capital to be employed in the city and also to study abroad. I think that this was caused by her limited cultural and social capital and also her lack of agency, uh, which is the strategic making and remaking of selves, identities, activities, relationships, cultural tools, and the resources and histories as embedded within relations of power. So in addition, her feeling of shame because of um, relatively poor English proficiency was a form of linguistic shame, as uh, a scholar Sunesh Kanagaraja described in one of her article in one of her, his articles. So Arun's English proficiency level and her limited um, social capital may have also influenced her concern uh, about her future and her self-doubt as aspirations are never individual. Uh, if she had had more friends or um, networks in Ulaanbaatar, she may have been more optimistic about her future and enjoyed matching aspirations. So uh, Sarnaz exerts shows how English and digital literacies were important as markers of social and cultural states of many people in different contexts in Mongolia. They have become important for Mongolian students to ensure their future employment and um, full participation in the global information society. Also, her another uh, comment shows that there was a difference uh, between the students' English proficiency and internet literacy based on their origins, urban and rural. So now I will summarize some of my findings. Um, 
Unequal internet access and the resource gaps in urban, suburban, and rural areas in contemporary Mongolia at first glance appears um, to be appear to be largely material divisions. However, uh, the resources or capital to which students had access, including territorial location, social networks, and family and educational background, shaped their engagement with the internet facilitating and facilitated by um, English proficiency and contributing to distinctive uh, digital literacy practices. So in my study, um, as capital attracts capital, the participants who were already advantaged in terms of using uh, English and digital literacies were more likely to develop uh, themselves further, um, accumulate, accumulate more capital and fit it in the field of higher education um, academically and also socially. So however, some students from suburban districts in Ulaanbaatar and rural areas with limited access to English and digital literacy practices experienced the deepening of existing inequality and further um, marginalization. So also, um, parents' level of education and occupation influenced on the students' embodied cultural capital and digital tastes. Since students grew up with different histories of access to technology, depending on um, their parents' uses of technology and expertise, uh, their online activities were quite different. Um, while some were creating, for example, content online, some never participated in those activities. So this means they had different digital tastes or habits. Um, it's noteworthy here that some students were not passive receptors of their family's capitals. They were actually generating capitals um, through learning and working using their English and digital literacies. So they always tried to move upwards in terms of their positioning in the society. Uh, this was related to their aspiration for social mobility. Um, as you can see, English and digital literacies played many important functions in the students' lives by giving them access to a variety of capital and shaping how they engaged with their uh, studies. So their English and digital literacies had symbolic value for the participants and helped them to access and accumulate all types of capital. So it's um, I should also mention here that all case study participants except um, Arun earned money during their university years using their English and digital literacies, working as tourist guides, doing some translation work, and teaching English. On the whole, the students appropriated um, their English and digital literacies to access different types of capital and accrue them for achieving their uh, aspirations. So they were exposed to a number of um, opportunities thanks to these literacies. Um, most importantly, they were able to develop themselves further by learning, by being tactical, and by being resilient to some of the constraints associated with their background. So these literacies were the gateways for accessing resources, social status, and transgressing social and lang language boundaries for the participants. Uh, for example, learning English uh, allowed some of the case study participants to transform their dispositions by being critical and reflective based on their knowledge, gained through the knowledge of the language. So, um, by learning an additional language to uh, their native language, some of the students um, uh, some of the students' uh, ways of seeing the world and their aspirations were changed. Uh, so further, English was not only a resource for change, but also for resistance for some of the participants. Um, they were critical, some of them were quite critical of the perceived superiority of English over Mongolian and maintained that both languages should be promoted equally for the sake of the future of Mongolia. So um, for some of the participants, English and digital literacies were resources for refashioning their dispositions and enacting their nationalistic or cultural identities. In these ways, they resisted uh, dominant discourses which may have devalued their own language and culture. Um, okay, yes, so um, this, uh, I, I try to be very quickly. So these are the concluding thoughts. Um, yeah, you can read them. Um, despite the diversities in terms of socioeconomic states, backgrounds, and English proficiency among the students, um, they use the digital technologies and internet in their everyday lives, and their perceptions of their uses confirm those technologies were already a part of their uh, habitus. 
And secondly, digital literacies were not their only means of communication, but also a medium of power through which the students pursued their own interests, learned, and ultimately found future employments. And um, my main conclusion was this one. Although the urban, rural, and digital, non-digital divides in terms of uh, physically accessing the internet have weakened in Mongolia, now it's gaining new dimensions, that is, inequalities of skills and meaningful usage, usage, for example, searching, evaluating, selecting, appropriating, and adapting online information and benefiting from it. So these um, inequalities associated with students' previous schooling can be uh, ameliorated in part through the provision of quality English and digital literacies education for children from all social backgrounds. They require opportunities to develop these vital literacies. And um, thank you for your attention. These are the references. <laughs> oh my God. I... Apologies that we had to run you. Well, I think we'll, we can, uh, one minute, right? We can take maybe one or two questions. And... Yes, please. <coughs> Oh, definition of lit digital literacy. In digital literacy, you know, uh, everyday uses of digital technologies, how we use digital technologies, technologies in reading, writing. So, um, yeah. So, for example, if you are using the internet or your mobile phones, uh, for example, to browse, maybe to uh, access the social media, this is one of the practices. So anything can be, the everyday, your everyday practices using the technologies can be digital literacy practices. I think that's also the same thing. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And uh, the important component of Hadith is mastery of life, in way of life. Dispositions or uh, habitus? Yeah, aspects, way of life. Yeah, I'm using the pure word use theory. So dispositions are our, our beliefs, tastes, uh, so... Um, I didn't see uh, so maybe you can, yeah, we can talk. Okay, thank okay. you. Thank you so much.